Hey everyone, it's Pastor Jeff. Excited to bring a word to you today. I'm excited that this is Easter week. Uh, we have Good Friday services planned this Friday evening. We're streaming at 6, 7, and 8. We've got special music. Pastor Hawkins is bringing a message, and we're going to be sharing in communion together. So get your communion elements ready ahead of time and join us for one of those Good Friday services uh, Friday evening. And I'm really excited about Easter Sunday. We've got an incredible service put together for you for this Sunday. There will be music. There will be speaking. Uh, it'll be a tremendous time hearing from several of our pastors. We're going to be streaming 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, and in the afternoon at 4, 5, and 6. So let your friends, family, co-workers, neighbors, let them know. Invite them to join us online this Easter Sunday. We're expecting to reach thousands, and we're believing for great results. So get the word out. Let as many people know and invite them to join us for Easter Sunday services online. The word that I want to bring to you uh, today is the word detour. It's something that's been on my mind since we've been in this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, none of us enjoy detours. Detours take us a long way out of the way. It takes a lot of extra time. The definition of a detour is a long or roundabout route that is taken to avoid something. Detours can seem like distractions. They are distractions from the intended route. They're unexpected. They're always inconvenient, takes us longer than we had planned. But here's what I can tell you. Life is filled with detours. COVID-19 seems like a huge detour for all of us. But I want to remind you of this point, and you hear us say it all the time, but it's the truth. God has a plan for your life and a purpose for your existence. And it's not just to have a job or collect a paycheck or pay bills or have fun on the weekends. There is a God-designed stamp on each of our lives. He has a destiny, a purpose, a calling, a divine intention for all of us. The writer of Hebrews says this, that we are to run with endurance the race that God has set before us. He has marked out a course for each of us, and we need to follow that plan, that purpose, and endure through that. Here's what I found in life. I know that most of you would agree with this, is that seldom does God take us from point A to point B in life without taking some detours or making some stops along the way. Sometimes we struggle how to interpret difficult circumstances that we face in life. But I want to remind you that God's hand is always on us. He is always with us, even through the storms and detours of life. Paul asked this question in Romans chapter 8. Does it mean that he no longer loves us if we have troubles or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Paul said, if God is for us, who can ever be against us? And in verse 28, he says, we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. So whatever your detour might be, it could be sickness or disease or some kind of changed plan in your life, COVID-19, that we're all experiencing. Here's the thing. Through all of our experiences in life, God is molding and shaping us as clay in his hands to be more like Jesus. God says this of himself in Isaiah 55, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. My ways are so far beyond anything you can imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. There are many examples of people who were on detours in the Bible. I think of Abraham, who was on a detour for 25 years. From the time that God had promised to make him uh, a great nation, he waited 25 years from that promise until he got his son. And he was 100 years old when his firstborn came into this world. I think of Moses, who led the Israelites out of captivity in Egypt, and they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. This is a, a, a couple of verses from Exodus chapter 13, verse 17. As Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt, listen to what these verses say. Verse 17 and 18. When Pharaoh finally let the people go, God did not lead them along the main road that runs through the Philistine territory, even though that was the shortest route to the promised land. God said, 
if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and run and return to Egypt. So God led them in a roundabout way through the wilderness toward the Red Sea. You see, sometimes God is taking us on a detour from the very beginning because he knows what's best for us. This is what Moses said in a couple chapters later, Exodus 15, 13, in your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed in your strength, you will guide them. Here's the thing. God is leading us and guiding us, and he knows how to get us where he wants us to go. Also, think of Joseph, who spent 13 years as a slave and in prison. But Joseph didn't dwell on the detours. Joseph never blamed his brothers for what they did to him because he saw God's design and God's purpose in the detours. And, and he lets us know about this in, in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. He said to his brothers, you intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. So here's the deal. Instead of asking God, which we often do when we face difficult times, why am I going through this? Let's instead ask God this question. How do you want to use this for your purpose and the calling and destiny that you have put on my life? I want to leave you with the lyrics of this worship song that we have been singing lately, Sea of Victory. And these are the lyrics. It says, the weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant because I know how this story ends. I'm going to see victory for the battle belongs to the Lord. And I love these words. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Let's believe that. Let's trust God. Let me pray for you. God, I just pray that you would help us as we face this big detour that seems to be so uh, enormous in front of us. And we don't know, God, what the course that you have for us. But we're going to trust you, God, that you see the big picture. Your ways are higher. Your thoughts are greater. God, you know what we need in our lives. And so today, God, we trust you. We believe you. We put our life in your hands and we allow you to have your way. Touch your people. Strengthen them day by day as they trust in you. We love you. Thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.